This is the Mount Holmes Trailhead. It's a hot day. We're going to go six miles out today. Camp at Winter Creek 1 Charlie 4. And then make try to summit Mount Holmes tomorrow. Trail goes that way and up onto that ridge. That'll be the majority of our elevation gain today. This lookout actually burned down in 2015. It's a beautiful day. It's a little bit hot. The wildflowers are blooming. The trail is pleasant. The meadow is nice. We're heading up into the Gallatin Range today. Towards Mount Holmes. Electric peak peeking up over there. Over the hillside. There. Oh. Right up there is where we are going. Winter Creek is over here beside us. And tomorrow, if all goes well, we'll be at the very summit of that. The very summit of that. 4,000 feet above us. Well, Marion, while you're doing that, where are we? Um, we are currently on the Winter Creek Trailhead, headed up to Mount Holmes. Which is there, in the distance. And we're probably a mile and a half into the trail, and I already had to pee, so... <laughs> we're drinking a lot of water. It's July, it's hot, it's windy, direct sunlight, not a cloud in the sky in any direction. Belt and child on bladder. Yep. Theo's with us. I'm going to pee a lot. <laughs> Aslan is not with us. He's staying with our friend and dog sitter, Brianna. Thanks, Brianna. Because the park is not dog friendly for the most part.
Hey, Marianne. Hey, Alex. I love you. I love you. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for letting me be here with you. I love being here with you. All right, we hiked about two and a half miles. We're just past the confluence of the Grizzly Lake Trail, which I think Grizzly Lake is the blue, blue disc down there. But we're gonna stop and eat some lunch because we're roughly halfway and it's only uh, 115 or 145, I mean. I brought Wild West pizza for lunch because obviously we're really roughing it here in the back country. Do you have any food in See it? Right above the water? That's our goal tomorrow. Here's home for the next two nights. One, it's one C4. Oh. <sighs> and this generally shady area over here. Fires are allowed here, we just didn't bring anything for them, so this will still probably be the center of our camp. We're gonna have to redeat because the skeeters are awful. Yes, I've already been bitten like five times just since arriving. There's our bear hang. Yeah. This is just wonderful little quiet meadows. No no man-made sounds at all. Occasionally planes will fly over, but I mean, you obviously can't hear a road from here. We saw a uh, coyote, probable coyote, possible wolf in the field behind us. <laughs> Where are we? At 1C4, at our, our next to death store. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? Nearly dead. <laughs> <gasps> Ugh, this is a Winter Creek. Mount Holmes is over there behind the trees. This is our home for the evening. We are right next to the trail, but this isn't a very 
high use trail, so I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. I think we we can and should put the tent way over there somewhere. So this looks like either the tent spot or the spot where they hitch the horses. There's not really a designated tent spot in most Yellowstone sites. But across this dry creek bed. And right over here to the kitchen and bearing. Where Marianne's at. All right, well, we are in our campsite. We've hiked a fair bit today. It's like five, almost six miles today. It's about five and a half to the summit of Mount Holmes, which is behind us over there. So it'll be five and a half to the summit, five and a half back down, planning to leave pretty early in the morning to, in hopes of doing that. The mosquitoes are the worst that they've ever been. Um, if you walk outside, there's just a constant buzzing and you kind of sit there. You can still hear the buzz from inside, yeah. Um, they're all just outside waiting for us whenever we're foolish enough to leave. It's been a very good day. It's a beautiful place up here. The mountain, mountain towering above and beautiful creek flowing through the valleys. I put a lot of turkey on my wraps so that we can take I don't know if the sheer number of mosquitoes is visible on the GoPro. <laughs> um, or this my is little dance. swing dances. This is straight up Telling. ludicrous. I, I mean... Like, I'm... <laughs> Alex said thanks for coming even though you're miserable earlier. And I made sure he knew that I wasn't miserable even though I was in a lot of pain. The mosquitoes are miserable. <laughs> They're monstrous. My feet are going to be murdered. Like I said, this is the worst I've ever seen mosquitoes anywhere. Worse than Nicaragua, worse than Beckler. Alaska, worse than Beckler. Which I don't know. I don't even want to know what Beckler's like right now. Yeah, if it's yeah. like this here. Allergy pill on the bottom of that pineapple bag. <laughs> Are you sure that's what it is? Mm -hmm. It's um, that's trash. not like Claritin allergy pill, but like a Alka Seltzer. Oh. Hmm. Isn't that like an indigestion pill? No, Alka Seltzer is a brand, but. That just be one is very stoic for a second here because I don't have the ability to stop pouring. 
for swatting. Thanks. Mm. Frantic. So frantic. So appropriately frantic. All right, you can stir and do whatever else needs to be done with it. Sorry, brother. Mm. My arm is gonna be sore. It's hard to see. There's so many mosquitoes. That's disgusting. All right, we are awake. It's morning. I'm gonna go climb Mount Holmes. Woods. Woods. Moist, chilly woods. With somewhere a fallen tree. A tree did fall this morning somewhere in the distance. At 5.05. .05. We were here to hear it. And the birds all woke up afterwards also. <laughs> mm. it, uh, it got cold. It's beautiful. But I would guess it's in the upper 30s, lower 40s right now from the way it feels. So, I'm gonna get on the trail here shortly. It's the morning light in Mount Holmes. The trail goes up the left side of it there. We're gonna follow it until we give up. Well, it's really cold, and Kind of unexpected. We came prepared for cold, but I wasn't really expecting it to get below freezing. That being said, sun's rising behind us. We did manage, just barely, to start before the break of day on our summit attempt on Mount Holmes. Mount Holmes is the last peak of the Gallatin Range, and it's 10,000 some odd feet. <sighs> It's about a five mile hike to gain 2,700 feet of elevation from where we are right now. All right, here's the Winter Creek Patrol cabin. Small, but nice. <laughs> this is Winter Creek flowing down out of the mountain to our right. Smells like willows. For the viewers who don't know, Marianne is doing this 30 weeks pregnant. Almost 31. We're rounding up today. <laughs> We're on the other side of 31 and a half. <sighs> the sun's out. It's starting to warm up. I'm going to take this jacket off probably in a little while. The shirt is baggy enough that, like, unless you know... I don't, you feel like you can't see my bump well enough. I'm yeah. a little chubby and you're like, she's not 31 weeks pregnant. I am. He's kicking. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Sprawling out into the distance. The mountains on the very distant horizon, I think, are the ones on the far side of the lake. And in the foreground, I think that thermal feature, that's the Norris area. I don't know. I doubt that's Norris specifically, but... Um, like that one is pretty solid. In color, there's not like a lot of fine detail to it. Things like that 
would be relatively easy to paint. And then if they don't turn out fantastic, then we can put them not smack in the middle of our living room. But I just think it would be a fun way to So that's our meadow for our campsite there. Winter Creek goes up this little valley. And we can still see where it comes off down the mountain right here. So we stopped for breakfast. Um, learned that I left the stove at home or at the camp. So we'll be uh, cold soaking everything, which works. Um, Marianne's looking because we think we see a bighorn sheep on the summit, the true summit of Holmes. So this, we think, is trilobite point, which is more jagged. Um, it's also a good bit lower. I have a confession. This back here is... Um, they could be. This back here is Mount Holmes. And it's possible that what we're looking at are trees. There's just no other trees up there. So. The one that's on the yeah. side... Is definitely a tree. All right, so we got from right to left Trilobite Point, which is actually lower than Mount Holmes. Mount Holmes is a sort of more dome shaped one in the middle, and on the far left are the white peaks, the ones that still have snow on the top there. We're aiming for Mount Holmes. The trail will go off sort of to the left and then loop up the valley between it and the white peaks, and then sort of switch back up to the summit. That tiny white point on the summit of Mount Holmes is the footing of the fire tower that used to be there, but it burned down from a lightning strike. Into lightning, of course, is a big concern on these high alpine hikes, so weather coming in or us getting too late in the day are our most likely causes of needing to turn back, but it is three miles of hiking to there and a few, about 2,000 feet of elevation gain, so we're about to start the, the hard work part of the trip shirt is folded up and that does me no good since my upper arms are not the ones that got burnt yesterday. I felt the sun hitting my sunburn and I was like, hmm, that feels odd. Oh yes. We're making slow but steady progress. These beautiful alpine meadows which slope pretty steeply up towards the mountain there.
There's so much purple over there. I know the whole field over there is yellow and purples. I wasn't going fast before. I'm really slowing down. <laughs> I'm gonna keep moving these things so slow you'll catch up. I did Hilgar pretty dang sick last year. Expectation. Especially, especially if we um, do fly home earlier. Yeah. A nice forest of very, very old trees here on the side of the mountain. We were discussing how in fantasy stories you hear about these places where it looks like a dragon came through. This is sort of one of those where all these trees have been knocked down. Obviously it was the wind that did it, but I can see why I can see why people described it that way in the past. The only dragons we have are the mosquitoes. Little devils. Beautiful mountain meadows. You can almost imagine life as a marmot or a chipmunk up here. Living in a place like this. Of course in the winter, well, hibernation is probably a good idea. I was say, I'm pretty sure this is just all snow in the winter. <laughs> That's why it's green now. It probably fills up with water in early spring. We're approaching the saddle between the white peaks here on our left and Holmes way over there on our right. From here on the side of the mountain, you can definitely see why this mountain has such a commanding view over the whole western district of the park. For our friends back home, this is something we call snow. In their case, it still hasn't melted yet. Here. Oh, that feels so good. Marion, how are you liking the Alpine? I like it. It's way up here. 
It is. We have worked hard to get here. And then Holmes is there above Marion. That's our still our goal. It's 11 o'clock right now, so we're actually making okay progress, all things considered. Well, Marion, how's mountain climbing at eight, at 30 weeks, 31 weeks? It's really freaking hard. <laughs> I don't feel good. I'm really hoping this food's gonna mm -hmm. do it. Otherwise, I'm gonna park myself here and let you finish up and brag about it later. <laughs> So out this way, past the mosquitoes, some of the rest of the Gallatin mountain range. Way off to the side over there, we go out towards West Yellowstone, Big Sky, all of that sort of area. The Gallatins do stretch all the way up to Bozeman, the highlight area, and um, Spanish Creeks, I believe, are all in the Gallatin range still. I could be wrong about highlight, but I know the Spanish Peaks are. This is the last of the Gallatins. I don't know exactly what they mean by that. Maybe it's the last one over 10,000. Because there's a mountain right behind us that's obviously part of the same range. But they say Holmes is the last of the Gallatins. The Gallatins are not volcanic, or at least not related to the um, rest of the Yellowstone supervolcano. They're more in relation to the fault line that's here, causing a granite uplift, kind of like the Tetons, but I think older than the Tetons. At least based on how they're a little bit less jagged. But you can see our trail going off into the distance there. I don't think this is the summit we can see here is the true summit of Holmes. I think it's around the corner. Um, I won't be terribly upset if we make it to this summit and then see what's happening after that. Honestly, I wouldn't be upset if we stopped here. This is an incredible place. These are white bark pines that Marianne's around. They're a high altitude pine tree. Their nut is extremely popular with grizzly bears, uh, which is the main reason why you find a bunch of grizzly bears. Those in the, in the moths that live under the rocks, you'll find a lot of bears at these high altitudes, despite it sort of looking desolate up here. The ones up the mountain there have got to be some of the oldest ones in the park. So those peaks over there include Echo and Three Rivers peaks. And the cirque on the other side of them is Gallatin Lake, which is the headwaters of the Gallatin River. It's right behind that kind of central cone and down in the, the valley there. So that valley down there is the town of West Yellowstone. I can actually see man-made structures down there. Hebgen Lake, which makes kind of straight out here past this tree, Hillguard Basin, um, the other Echo Peak. There's an Echo Peak close to here. Um, I was not breathing enough to listen to you at that point. <laughs> well... This is the view. This is West District. I think that's Fountain Paint Pots way over there. Um, that's Mount Sheridan. If the smoke were a little bit less, we'd probably see the Tetons from here. Yeah, I think so. Um, but the, there is a smoke, some smoke on the horizon. Down there is Norris and the Gibbon Meadows, Geyser Basins. And then, so have a short distance to go. Some mountain goat fur. <sighs> oh. 
almost there. This is the now burned down Holmes Fire Tower. Used to be able to stay in it as employees. This is the summit. It's burned down after a lightning strike in the 20 teens sometime. It was probably really cool when it existed. And then this is Holmes Repeater, one of our radio towers. Whew. Assume those are solar panels for it right there. I believe Electric Peak at the end over there. It doesn't seem as far away as it should. Out there, of course, is the sprawling Gallatins heading out towards Bozeman. I think that's Lone Peak in the very distant haze over there, um, the ski resort, so that's kind of awesome. You can see that from here. Down there, that's Hebgen Lake, an earthquake lake behind it, town of West Yellowstone in the foreground. Holmes Repeater right here. And then out towards the west district of the park. So you can see Fountain Flats, which is over there. Old Faithful will be on the other side of the hill from it. So not really visible from here. Norris Geyser Basin, Gibbon Meadows Thermal Area, out here behind the electrical box. And then towards the Washburn Range, towards Avalanche Peak, in the East District over that way. And then into the Beartooths, off over the fire tower there. I really wish I could have seen this fire tower when it was in its heyday. I think this would have been really cool. Not super scared. Not a whole lot of people up here, I imagine. I found her in front of a beautiful view. It is one extremely impressive woman to have climbed all the way up this far while pregnant, 30 weeks, 31 weeks, and she had COVID last week. All right, it's afternoon. We're starting, it's uh, when actually 1.30 or so, starting to make our way back down. That's Electric Peak above Marianne's head there. Another similar climb to this one. And views out here are just incredible. There wasn't nearly this much water. I guess, I mean, obviously it's warm, so it melted. Is this what I felt like I was doing while you were hiking? Melting? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoying your joint? I am. It's cherry flavored. Cherry flavored honey. Cherry flavored Montana honey. Local honey. Ooh. Don't fall. We just refilled our water from this beautiful wildflower meadow. And this beautiful little brook running right through it. 
that gap in the mountains over there almost looks like it goes out to the ocean, but actually that's just more mountains. Marianne, how's our hike down going for you? Painful. Painful indeed. Very painful. That's reasonable. It's the mountain behind us. <laughs> All right, the clouds have brought cool with them. Let's see if they'll bring rain with them too. A cool is nice. Us and our 1.5 million closest mosquito friends have finally made it back. Against all the odds, 11 hours of hiking, and we are back at camp. Complete with 175 million mosquitoes. Climb Mount Holmes. Marianne was an epic trooper. She obviously, it was a very uncomfortable overall experience for her, but she made it. We're very sore, very tired, and very hungry. So, making some dinner, and honestly, we're probably going to go to bed before terribly long. At least that's my thoughts and opinions as to what should happen. It was a truly epic journey. We I'm going to turn off the track and let me read off some numbers here. 11.25 total miles with roughly 2,682 feet of elevation gain. And we did that over roughly 12, 12 hours. Counting. If the mosquitoes weren't so truly awful, this would probably be one of my favorite campsites of all time. Deed only kind of helps. And we've used almost a whole can while we've been out here. So it wears off pretty fast with these skeeters. Most of my backpacking gear was originally designated for the idea of living on a trail for six months. Mm. This has just been awesome. I love I love the adventure, you know? Yeah. I think you are supposed to feel a little bruised and battered at the end of a proper adventure. At least we've said that before. We haven't always lived up to it. Sometimes we have. Today is one of those times. But... Marianne, how's your um, pasta the primavera with grilled chicken? It's not too bad. It's not my favorite. I really am a sucker for the lasagnas. I have lasagna over there. No, it's too late. <laughs> Mine was pretty good, but like we were just saying, I'm almost too tired to eat. So I got a little more to finish than I plan to finish it. Ugh, it was a good day. It was a, it was an epic day. It was a day kind of like Frodo and Sam summoning Mordor, Mount Doom kind of day. Like we feel like we did an adventure. My pregnant feet have changed and my boots don't fit well anymore. And I am covered in blisters. All ten toes, in between half of my toes, balls of my feet, and both heels. That's a lot of blisters. Blistered. You probably, your gait is probably different too, like the way your foot falls and everything. My belly and, and my pelvis have changed, obviously, and so, yeah, and I think that's part of why my hips hurt so bad. It's just, there's a lot to being pregnant. Being pregnant. And deciding to climb a mountain. Yeah.
it's not just the tired and heavierness. Like, there is so much to your body that changes. And I think it's worth it. I just wasn't prepared for it to be everything that it was. If if another pregnant person has ever done this trail, they probably didn't know they were pregnant at the time. So I think there's a good chance you may be one of one of or the only person to do it. It was not easy. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think mm. it was stunning. I'm really glad we were able to do it. We've been looking at this trail for three years. It was not easy. And it will not be easy to get out. <laughs> no, nope, we still have six miles tomorrow. The sun reset is out there. The sun reset. Sun reset. I love you. You can see it right up there, right behind all those mosquitoes. <laughs> Very less than there were a couple minutes ago. Yeah, there's plenty of the United ones around. It's not a bad campsite view at all. This is Winter Creek, home to some very tiny brook trout. I did manage to get some to bite yesterday, uh, but they were too small to set the hook on, I think. Um, but it was pretty cool to get them to come up and watch them sip a little parachute atoms. Which they did. They came up nose first. But, I mean, it's the tiniest little brook trout. Probably less than four inches. This has been home for the last two days. I'm going to miss it, actually. Campsite's right over here in these trees. Down here filling up water. Gonna hit the road in here and soon. This mountain that's been looming over our campsite is Antler Peak, I believe. One of the Gallatins below Mount Holmes. Which you can't actually see Holmes from here. We're in the shadow of Trilobite Peak, which is this one. Man, I love you a lot. Love you more. This baby's getting big. <laughs> She means I literally, not like a metaphor. Yeah, no, like, this is getting harder and harder. <laughs> I tried to pull it up over, but it's making this really uncomfortable, so it may have to go back in the center of the bump. Yeah. But. I'm gonna have to pick a wedgie after this time. <laughs> the way out just has little uphill jaunts. Yeah. But they are still here. And after yesterday, you certainly noticed them. Marion, how's the hike out? Much better than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful here too. All these wildflowers and it is. the rushing creek down there. Okay. 
It's follow this power line cut right back to the car. We are almost to the end. Just a short distance left to go. We are, I mean, this has been an amazing trip, but by the time you get to the last mile of any trip, you're pretty much ready to be at the car. Yep. And uh, that's where I'm at. This has been wonderful. I've loved walking through the wildflowers, although I've been sneezing so much I haven't had to say, hey bear, a single time. And even the mosquitoes I can appreciate in their own little way, being part of the ecosystem and whatnot. But, whew, the AC in the car, a seat designed for human butts is gonna feel awfully nice. And food, food that's not been rehydrated. Whew. Excuse me. <sighs> this goldenrod's what's making me sneeze, I think. It's beautiful though. The roar of the road makes you realize how quiet it was back at the campsite. But our parking spot is just in these trees. Oh. Never has anybody found a Volvo so beautiful. <sighs> well, Marianne, how was climbing Mount Holmes 31 week pre weeks pregnant? Pretty painful. Truthfully, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. It was very, very, very cool experience, but it was very difficult. What advice would you give to other pregnant people that want to climb Mount Holmes at 31 weeks? Wear the dang tape. Tape your belly. Mm. And test your shoes. If you're this late in the game, your feet are probably changing. Mine were, and I probably should have figured out a different way to wear them, pack your tile and all, take it every six hours. You're allowed to. It's okay. Um, and then lots of sunscreen because we burn much easier than we used to. And day two was 100% in the sun. Yep. All above tree line pretty yep. much. Pack lots of snacks. I didn't pack enough snacks. Um, I needed some more food. I needed more calories. So... My only major things unrelated to pregnancy, for me personally, would have been snacks. I would have wanted more snacks. And I think I would have liked a really thin, like lightweight but insulated pair of gloves for yesterday morning. That's fair. Um, yeah. Because it was cold. I almost packed just like a liner glove. Yeah. Um, and then I decided against it, but... I only would have wanted it for about 20 pregnant, minutes. Being so. pregnant, I <laughs> warm up much quicker than I usually do and so I was pretty fine like I didn't really need them if we had had to take the tent down at the same time of day we did yesterday yeah that would have sucked um, but because we waited until after the sun rose it was it was not very cold this morning so those are my tips and don't do it if you haven't done things like that before probably yes. if you have not climbed over 10,000 feet before do not wait until you're pregnant at all, but especially not in the near eight month range. <laughs> Video. Yeah. We made it to the lower store. Civilization. I'm going to eat this in three bites. 